Hi, I'm Pete Lesser, Chief Curator for the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and welcome to Chesapeake Treasure. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the least noticed boats in our floating fleet of historic vessels, uh, the one that, that I'm standing on, which we call the Pot Pie Skiff. A pot pie would be seem to be an, a funny name for a boat, uh, but it takes, like a lot of boats, it takes its name from uh, geography. Uh, pot pie is the waterman's nickname for a village not too far from St. Michael's that's known to the post office as Whitman. Uh, and boats that were built in pot pie by John Dick Harrison and, and George Jackson and uh, a man by the name of Brando were all uh, all shared some characteristics in common, in particular a distinctive stern shape. And if you look at, at this boat, the stern, it has a nice little transom that just barely kisses the water in the center. Not much berry back there, so that it, this is more or less the stern that you would expect to find on a sailboat. And in fact, it is little changed from the sailing skiffs that would have preceded boat uh, power boats like this, watermen's power work boats. Boats like this would have been used for for oystering, particularly the larger ones, but uh, even more so through the 20th century for crabbing. Uh, this would have been used for running a trot line, uh, a, a long baited line along the, the starboard side, and, and as they ran down the line, the watermen, watermen would take the crabs off it with, uh, with a dip net. This particular one was the last boat built by George Jackson of Pot Pie. Uh, he built 220 boats of various sizes. This is a smaller one at only 26 feet long, so small that he never bothered to put a forward cabin on it. He built it for a local Pot Pie waterman named Locke Brando. And Brando would have used this for, for crabbing, for trot lining. Uh, he would have he would have steered it, not with a wheel, but with a tiller along the starboard side here. Forward steers the boat to port, bringing it, the tiller aft steers the boat to starboard. And you can see, as I turn the tiller, how it, uh, it uh, is strung up to, to, uh, to, to turn the tiller back on, right on the rudder head. But by doing it here, with this vertical tiller on the side, the waterman could tend to his his trot his trot line and his dip net, uh, steering if he if he had to with his hip. It was a, a steering system that was favored by a number of, of Chesapeake watermen, and really still is uh, a convenient way to do it. Incidentally, if you you almost always see these tillers set up on the starboard side. There have been a few exceptions. If you see one of these on the port side, it tells you that the waterman is left hand. Now boats like this went out of fashion. Later, even later bo uh, boat builders in Pot Pie, uh, uh, Walter Jones and Son and Melvin Marshall didn't build sterns like this. They built what we call the conventional box stern where there's more transom sitting down into the water, a little broader in the stern so that when the boat got powered up with a, a high hor higher horsepower engine, the boat would it would have enough buoyancy to avoid squatting down in the stern. That was sort of the flaw of these boats. These boats were good for the earlier low horsepower engines that the watermen favored. And in fact, this one was originally powered by a 14 horsepower air-cooled engine. Direct drive, that is, there was no transmission. If the boat was on, you were running in forward. There was no reverse, there was no neutral. And the waterman, in fact, Locke Brando, uh, when he was coming up to his stake at the end of the day or to a dock to unload, he would simply cut the engine with enough time to let the momentum of the boat carry him gently where he, into where he was going. It was a maneuver that the local waterman called the pot pie shoot up, although frankly, it wasn't unique to pot pie. Any number of watermen in the early 20th century would have had a similar arrangement because having an engine only, no transmission, was a more economical arrangement for them. They just needed to have good boat handling skills. All written into the, the record that is this pot pie skiff, maintained afloat here 
and operational at the museum's Waterman Wharf. Thank you for joining me today for A Chesapeake Treasure.